Okay, so this is either light, and what we can do very easily is you point towards the subject. I'm looking at the screen, which I'll be able to show with you in a moment. Once you aim it at the screen, you press the button to start scanning. The scan will appear, and then as you move around the subject very quickly, we can move, we can make sure that you've covered all the areas that you want to cover. We can look up the nose if you need to do that area and make sure that you've got perhaps the ears as a reference. Then you press stop and then the subject's finished. This is what the space spider looks like. What we need to do with this one, of course, to make it work, you do have to get in a lot closer. So what we do is as you move in closer to the subject, then you can see on the screen what we're looking at. We say click to start, and again, the same idea applies. So as you move around the subject, we need to actually get a lot closer. But because it's a smaller field of view, what we need to do is work out to get in closer. And if you lose the position, the scanner picks up from where it left off. So now what I need to do is try to get underneath the nose here, move back around the other side, and that's the principle of the space spider. Once you've actually got the scan, the scanner has actually re recorded two types. One is called fast fusion, and the other one is the raw data. If you actually take the raw data, we can see it in different views, so there's meshes, bits and pieces like this, solids, wireframe. The most important thing is that within the raw data we need to actually run what we call a global registration. To run the registration, it's fairly simple, you've got a couple of options. It runs through and it makes sure that the scan is fully aligned. Then when you come to take the scan and you want to use it, we need to fuse it into in this case, a watertight scanned mesh. It just takes a few seconds to run through. The bigger the scan, the more time it will take. Here we can see that the scan we processed from the raw data using the Space Boy Spider. The detail that you get is actually quite stunning, although it took longer to actually process. If we take the data that we scanned with the EVA light scanner, what we can do is we first need to unselect this one, select the other one. You can see again that raw data doesn't look very appealing to start with. If you want to, you can actually come in and use the edit tools. We have some tools here where we can select and remove bits and pieces. So you can actually come around here with different tools like the lasso. Select the things that you don't want. The areas that are red, we can then erase. We go back into our tools and perform global registration. And then we need to actually fuse it into a mesh again. So here we're using the sharp fusion, same settings. There's more data being processed, so obviously with fusion it takes a while. But you can see here, because we asked for watertight, it's actually created a stunning piece of scan. You can remove all the small little tiny objects and then using the edit tools, we can come in here and then we can select, in this case, the area we want to keep. You can then invert the selection and erase the other information. And here, this is the result of the EVA scan. All you need to do is export the meshes.
Should you need to use your scan data in CAD later, as it's mesh, you may need to use some third party software. We quite like this quick surface program as it's very easy to use and very affordable. You import the scan mesh that you made. This is what we made in the Artec software. Then all we need to do is use the auto surfacing. We can ask for the level of detail that we want. You click preview. It runs through all the mesh data. It makes analysing of this to rebuild NURB surfaces that will fit your model. Here you can see how quick and easy it was to do. You can see the patches of the surfaces and here's it rendered. Also you can check surface continuity so there's different options in here for analysing, checking bits and pieces, um, things that you might want to do. The key is that you can now export this as a step file or IGES and there is an option directly to send it to SOLIDWORKS. Now you have your step file, you can utilise it in any CAD system that supports importing of step and IGES files.